Hello, and good morning from the city of Peterborough. You joined me just outside where the RTV-31 is located. This was a tracked hovercraft that was part of an experimental project in the 1960s and 70s that aimed to provide intercity train service at speeds of up to 250 miles an hour or 402 kilometers an hour. Sadly though, funding was cut before development allowed for these sorts of speeds and the tracked hovercraft only ever achieved a top speed of 104 miles an hour in testing. As much as I wish I could say I was bringing you a trip report on this, I'm actually about to make the short walk from here to Peterborough Station, where I'll be catching a ride aboard one of Greater Anglia's new regional trains through to Ipswich in Suffolk. But before we get the video started, don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Friday. After a short but pleasant walk from the tracked hovercraft, we arrive at Peterborough Station, which is also in close proximity to the city centre. The current station dates all the way back to 1850, but as you can probably tell just by looking at the building, it's been altered several times since. As you enter the station, you'll find a travel centre which includes staff ticket counters to your left. And off to the right you'll find a customer information point as well as several departure boards. Our train, which is the 11.50 to Ipswich, is currently showing us on time and departing from Platform 6. Peterborough is located on the East Coast Main Line and is a major calling point, seeing LNER services to London, Yorkshire and Scotland, Thameslink services such as the one seen here to Horsham via London, Peak Time Great Northern services also to London, EMR services to Norwich and Liverpool, and the Greater Anglia service will be catching to Ipswich. And here's our train arriving on its inbound service from Ipswich. The service today is operated by one of Greater Anglia's new Class 755 Stabler Flirts. This version of the Stabler Flirt is bi-mode, meaning that they can operate on electric provided by overhead wires where the infrastructure allows, but also have diesel generators to allow for operations on non-electrified lines. Today's train consists of four passenger carriages, plus a smaller power pack car which houses the diesel generators. One improvement that these trains have over their predecessors is that they feature full step-free access. While this feature may go unnoticed by most, for wheelchair users and people of reduced mobility, this is a game-changing feature as it negates the need to book someone to assist you with a ramp. As you might expect from a regional train, only standard class or second class seating is offered. This is laid out in a 2 plus 2 configuration and features a good mix of table and airline style seats. Before we get going, let's just take a quick look around one of the seats. As regional trains go, legroom is pretty good and perfectly acceptable. Each of the airline style seats features a small but nonetheless sturdy tray table and they even feature little grooves for supporting a tablet or mobile device. Each pair of seats has access to both a 3-pin and USB-A power outlet. Lastly, the seats themselves offer a very comfortable experience, thanks to the fact that they're nicely padded and well shaped, with the winged leather headrests adding a nice touch of class. As the train wasn't at all busy, I moved to a bay of four at the front, with the only difference with these being that they feature these nice big faux wood tables. Before we depart, let's just take a quick look at our route for today. Upon departing Peterborough, we'll travel in a south-easterly direction via the likes of Ely, Bury St Edmunds and Stowmarket before arriving into Ipswich for a total distance travelled of 83 miles or 134 kilometres. Our scheduled journey time today is 1 hour and 38 minutes and we'll be hitting speeds of up to 100 miles an hour or 161 kilometres an hour. And we depart Peterborough bang on time at 11.50. Welcome 
Welcome to this service for Ipswich. We will be calling at Whittlesea, March, Maney, Ely, Bury St Edmunds, Stowmarket, and Ipswich. Almost immediately after departing Peterborough, we part ways with the East Coast Main Line and join the Ely to Peterborough Line for the first portion of the trip. Our first calling point is Whittlesea. Interestingly, the station signage still uses an older spelling of the town, ending in S-E-A as opposed to the current spelling, which ends in S-E-Y. Next up is March. Historically, this was once a major railway junction and interchange, and its Whitemore marshalling yards were once the second biggest railway siding in Europe. Nowadays, the station plays a much lesser role, having been reduced from seven platforms to just two, although it's still clear to see how big the station once was, thanks to old, disused footbridges and platforms still being visible. Welcome to this service for Ipswich. We will be calling at Maney and Ipswich. The next stop will be Maney. As we continue southeast across the Fenlands, here's just a quick insert about my Patreon page. Patrons gain access to most of my videos two weeks before everyone else, and best of all, without all those pesky ads. You can get this for as little as $1 per month. A link to my Patreon page can be found in the top right corner of the screen now, as well as in the description below. We are now approaching Ely. If you see something that doesn't... As we approach our next stop, Ely, we can see its cathedral in the background, which dates all the way back to 1083. A few moments later, we arrive at Ely Station. The city was actually once an island until the surrounding land was drained in the 18th century. Nowadays, Ely is a cathedral city and home to around 20,000 people. The next stop will be Bury St Edmunds. Okay, time for a closer look at what the inside of these Stadler flirts have to offer. Each unit has space to accommodate up to six bicycles. Usage of bicycle spaces is free and doesn't need to be reserved. You'll find these nice and clear information screens throughout the train. These display things such as upcoming stops and which coaches are and aren't busy. I must say that as far as regional trains go, the interior is really quite nice. A combination of lighting that isn't too bright and the forward finishings at the ends of carriages help to create a really nice atmosphere, I think. A pair of toilets can be found in the second carriage from the front. And I'm pleased to report that everything was nice and clean, well stocked and working as intended as far as I could tell. With this being a regional train, it's nice to see that they feature plenty of fold-out seating for use if the train is busy. And moving past the accessible toilet, we find a couple of spaces for wheelchair users. The next carriage is the Power Pack car. This is one third the length of the regular passenger carriages and, like I said earlier, houses the diesel generators. This is a concept I really like, as unlike on most other diesel and bi-mode trains where the generators are under the passenger carriages, Keeping them in a separate car such as this allows for a much quieter and more comfortable passenger experience. Moving beyond the power pack car, you'll find another two passenger carriages. 
In terms of luggage storage, you'll find stacks for larger items dotted throughout the train, with there also being plenty of space for smaller items on overhead racks. One last observation as I make my way back to my seat, I really like how the open gangways between carriages help to create a nice and spacious feeling throughout the train. As you would expect from such a new train, these units are equipped with complementary Wi-Fi. As far as train Wi-Fi goes, the speed is okay and note that you should get decent enough 4G coverage for most of the trip as well. Back outside and we've now joined the Ipswich to Ely line. This sure was a beautiful early spring day as we now find ourselves travelling through the county of Suffolk. Our penultimate intermediate stop today is Bury St Edmunds. The town has been inhabited since as far back as the year 1080 and was originally called Beodricksworth. Welcome to this service for Ipswich. A short while after departing Bury St Edmunds, we join up with the Great Eastern Main Line. Our final stop before arriving into Ipswich is Stowe Market, where you can change for services through to Norwich. Up to this point, we've been running on diesel power, but we switched to electric here. You can really notice the increase in acceleration once the switch has taken place. These things really get up to speed in no time at all. Ipswich. The next stop will be Ipswich. It's this last little portion of the trip on the Great Eastern Main Line that we achieved the Stabler Flirt's top speed of 100 miles an hour. Even at these sorts of speeds I found the ride quality to be impressively good, with very little in the way of rattles and bumps. Overall, I was very impressed with Greater Anglia's Class 755s. It's easy to see why the Stadler Flirt is one of the most popular types of train in Europe and indeed across the world, thanks to their impressive acceleration and smooth ride quality. Couple all that with the comfy seats and smart interior that Greater Anglia have kitted these trains out with, and I'd go as far as saying that these are probably the best regional trains in the UK at the moment. So I guess you're wondering how much my ride across from Peterborough costed me today. I paid £18.05 for an off-peak day single, including railcard discount of a third. For reference, the price without a rail card is £27.40. While this type of ticket does offer a fairly good amount of flexibility as to what train you travel on, I still think that's quite expensive for a fairly short journey such as this. Unfortunately, it would appear that Greater Anglia don't offer any sort of advanced tickets on this route, but should you be making a return journey, the price is only 10p more than a single, which suddenly represents much better value for money in my opinion. However, I do appreciate that these are just my thoughts and opinions, so I'm curious to hear about your experiences on Greater Anglia's Class 755s, and if you have any experience of this, how you think they compare to Stabler flirts that you have been on in other countries. Here. All change, please. Anyway, welcome to sunny Ipswich, where we have arrived on time at 28 minutes past one in the afternoon. Well, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave us a like and a comment below. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Friday. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you next Friday.